some crazy stuff jumping off in Seattle. I saw this report and I was like, okay. It's so wild out here. I'm not going to front. <laughs> this this is a wild. crazy story. So there's some chaos that happened at a Seattle encampment. I'm not sure if you heard about this beforehand. This no. is probably like big local news, but it also made national headlines. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. We do have a clip. Uh, there's a bench warrant that has been issued for the arrest of Arius Beckett Sumpay, a.k.a. Lady Gangsta. Shout out to her. But the King County prosecutors um, have charged the 28-year-old with first-degree assault uh, she's accused of stabbing a man several times with a knife over an alleged dispute over a tent involving a fellow encampment resident. Let's take a look. Scenes of violence on the streets of the Emerald City. The spotlight has obtained video of a wild stabbing that led to an AK-47 style rifle being fired in a Seattle homeless camp. Take a look as a van pulls up to drop off food for the people who are living in tents on 13th Street, just north of Dearborn, between the Goodwill and Public Storage Building. The guy bending over to pick up food is David Charles Burchak. His wife has been having issues with a woman named Arius Beckett Sumpay, better known on the streets as Lady Gangster. Apparently, Burchak told Lady Gangster she needed to move her tent. Instead, she sneaks up behind him and shanks him repeatedly with a knife, lacerating his liver, intestines, spleen, and severing a tendon in his arm. Lady Gangster then casually heads up the stairs that leads towards 12th Avenue and the Navigation Center. Meanwhile, Burchak runs to his tent and grabs his rifle, managing to squeeze off a round before succumbing to his wounds. At that point, his friend, who is yet to be identified, takes the AK-47 style rifle and peels off a series of shots at Lady Gangster as she scampers up the hill. This is all happening at 10 a.m. on a Monday. Adam, who told us about the ordeal, was asleep in the red tent you see there at the bottom left of your screen. Sir, this morning I woke up and literally two feet from my head somebody got stabbed and someone took an AK-47 to the airport times. I mean, I'm terrified. He eventually pops out to get some food. Meanwhile, Burchak's friend stashes the rifle back in Burchak's tent where his wife tries to play. All right. Well, I'm Lady so Gangster uh, didn't show up for her arraignment. I mean, I don't know. That actually made me laugh when I read it in the news report. I'm like, why would she show up for an arraignment for a first degree? No, she's not going to. Anyway, she's um, basically on the run. You guys look out for her. She's got 5150 tatted on her neck and poncho. Uh, what, is, what is going on here? It's been a little wild out here lately. I'm not even going to front, like living downtown. I Where was I coming from? I think I went to Xfinity, um, the one on SLU, and I'm like walking across the street. And then uh, you could tell these people weren't really from here, at least the people that were with their friends. And this one girl was like, be careful. This area is a little sketchy. And what's crazy is South Lake Union never used to be a sketchy area. But nowadays you have all these encampments. You know, I've seen the photos where it's like if you kind of look underneath the Space Needle, but you're like kind of going over by that bridge as if you're going towards QFC. Tons and tons and tons of tents everywhere. I remember I was in my lift one day and this guy was like, what is going on over there? I was like, people are living there. What do you mean? Chow, listen, it's giving, you're already living in like the homeless encampment, which is breeding grounds for, I think, just a lot of hardship and animosity. So in the beginning of the clip, and I agree with Miss Dia, what took me out is that all of this is taking place early in the morning. Like y'all don't even have a cup of coffee. And then for him to pull out and just have a rifle in the encampment and be able to get off a few rounds, I mean... Shout out to him. I mean, you got to be able to protect yourself at all times. So you're not, I mean, I guess you just know what population of people that you're dealing with. Um, Healing Broken Wings says, well, that's regular life here in D.C. I would have to argue that it definitely is. Uh, so, man, protect yourself at all times. I mean, wow. I just, I, I'm... I'm shocked. Well, <laughs> but not also right. a lady that, um, oh, I don't remember where she was walking. I think she was in Belltown. And she's like walking down the street. I don't think it was like super late, but it was dark enough. Somebody came up behind her and hit her in the head with a skateboard. Right. 
She wasn't a part of any homeless and lady was just walking down the street, minding her business. So now if it's like, you know, it's kind of light outside. So say I were to go to the dispensary right now, I'm literally going to take a lift or ride a scooter. The dispensary is like a little 10 minute, 15 minute walk max there, 15 minutes back. But the fact that it could get dark, it now makes it to where I'm just like, you guys are just acting real crazy out here. And there's like really a lot of new little homeless pods, if you will, that are just popping up everywhere. Yeah, I uh, see. Uh, really, the homeless population as a whole can. I mean, we do need to figure out what we can do to support our our, our unhoused, um, our residents that are unhoused. That's the new politically correct term. Um, and with that being said, it also just comes with like, how do we do that in the best way possible? Um, clearly, Lady Gangsta got 5150 tatted on her neck. She's already self-proclaiming that she's got some mental health issues. So if you, I mean, if you pull up and you stabbing somebody at 10 o'clock in the morning, it's something not all the way right with you. Let's just, let's just keep it a buck. So I don't know.